Hello again. Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis, and here we keep winding down 2021. Uh, over 7,000 interviews, over a million people have uh, watched different episodes of the show, but we're not satisfied yet. And uh, maybe, we, maybe we will be after the next interviewee, and that is Victoria Yem Plofsky, Plofsky, founder Plofsky. of the, is that, sorry about that, founder of the Startup Station. Welcome. Thank you so much, dear Priya. I'm very uh, happy to be on the show and uh, nice to meet you. So uh, tell us about Startup Station. Sure. Um, I've started Startup Station in 2013. So the company is eight years old and it's a finance advisory and education platform for startups. So what we do falls into three categories. One is consulting. We advise startups pre-funding and post-funding. Pre-funding, we help entrepreneurs to articulate their value proposition from an investor's point of view. So we help them put financials that they understand, can justify, that really uh, show a path to profitability, how those strategic decisions turn into financial results and how they're going to measure success. And armed with these financial models and the resulting valuation, uh, entrepreneurs can easier convince investors that their uh, business is feasible from the financial point of view, as well as use these models to execute on their plans post-funding. And post-funding, you know, we continue to work with entrepreneurs who will help raise funds and we help them execute on those plans so that they can put their vision in reality and really focus on growing the company uh, while we're building a financial infrastructure underneath them until they reach about 5 million in revenue. There is an education arm of the startup station where we work with entrepreneurs who are bootstrapping or with accelerators. And it's a finance program that I've created uh, starting in 2015 for entrepreneurs with no finance experience to really allow them to model and validate their startup themselves. And it covers accounting, financial modeling, valuation, and startup finance. It really prepares them uh, to understand the basics of finance, uh, to both you know, either create you know, these materials themselves, but also to communicate with investors and the finance team on the same level so that they're able to understand the terminology and they're able to make decisions in an informed way, as opposed to being scared, overwhelmed, uh, confused, et cetera. And finally, the third pillar of the startup station is community, where we do a lot of free events, uh, interviews, we create a lot of content for the YouTube channel and social media. We are entrepreneurs who are just beginning on their fundraising journey, can go and learn a lot of the more introductory topics and get familiar with how the fundraising landscape looks like and what they will have to do to raise capital. Well, that's quite an ambitious uh, mission that you have. Uh... What led you to doing this? What did you do previous? Uh, well, I didn't wake up one day and created the startup station. You know, it was not a clear path. Uh, I was born in St. Petersburg, Russia. I came here um, in 1996, and first I pursued a computer science degree. It was a, a very practical thing to do from the immigrant point of view, but it wasn't my passion. So even by the time that I graduated, I went to Cornell University, I knew that I didn't want to be a programmer. It's a great profession, it just wasn't something that I wanted to do. So I ended up doing IT consulting and became business analyst for a major IT consulting firm. I didn't love it either. It still wasn't really, I think, uh, enough of a mix of creative and business and technical for me, it was very technical. Uh, so then I went, wanted to switch to finance. So I went to Columbia Business School and I spent a few years on Wall Street. And I think I found the same issues where any job that I had up to this point, which of course we were at more junior levels, it was only focused in one area, whereas um, entrepreneurship allows you to do many different things every day, no day is like the other one. And so uh, in 2009, I quit my job and uh, um, I started a film company and it may seem like it's really out of the blue, but it's not because I have acting background together with my you know, computer science and finance education. I also uh, was an actress as a child since 11 years old. And so I always had the uh, interest in creative arts. So in I Saint decided- In St. Petersburg. Huh? In St. Petersburg you were In St. Petersburg, yes, yes. I was in a professional theater uh, and I acted you know, for two years. Uh, in the professional theater every, I had three performances a week, uh, one on Saturday and two on Sunday. So that was quite interesting. That's together with being with the, in a specialized with uh, physics and computer science school. <laughs> so that I did during the week and then the weekend I acted in theater. 
But so anyway, so I approached it from the business point of view. And, uh, you know, at that point in my life, I was uh, very arrogant. I never really failed. And uh, when I started my first venture, I made all of the mistakes that first time entrepreneurs make. I tried to raise too much money. I tried to raise 165 million as my first raise for a slate of films from both production distribution funds. I didn't put the right team together. I mean, of course I put together whom I could get, but that wasn't a team that could justify that race. I did not you know, validate the product market fit for whatever new way I thought of um, financing independent films. So after two years, uh, it all folded, you know, uh, and it failed and it was a very difficult experience, but I think it was absolutely necessary for my growth. And it gave me an idea for my company because I realized that just like film producers, are very passionate about their idea and how they want to change the world and the idea they want to, you know, bring forward. Um, entrepreneurs, they're also passionate and none of them, or let's put it this way, very few of them have any idea of how to bring their ideas to market before they get any business and finance experience. Of course, sometimes they have those people in a team and they're lucky. Most of the times they would be product experts who really know the industry and they uh, found something that doesn't work and they've come up with an idea to fix it. Right, but that's just an idea does not make a business. And it all depends on the execution and very few ideas remain unchanged when they finally get formed, get metaf go through metaphors for becoming a company. Uh, and so I created the startup station and, you know, and then eventually it became after eight years, the three pillars. It started as a consulting, then I added the education arm. And then I added the community arm and everything expanded. You know, first we just did pre-funding support. Now we do post-funding. So and now I have a team. Uh, so it all was a journey that, um, and also not a straightforward one with a lot of learnings along the way. Uh, but it gives me a lot of joy to help people put their dreams into uh, reality. Well, quite a diversified background, and uh, I think really helps to make your experiences make it better for the entrepreneur. But are there specific industries? I, I know you mentioned size that you think that you're best suited for helping or that you're most comfortable with right now. So finance is really industry agnostic. So it doesn't matter uh, what the industry is. It is a framework that is an approach of analyzing business plans and helping entrepreneurs see how their vision should be translated into strategic decisions, which are inputs to the model. And then how those decisions will further get translated, right? What is the business logic? What does the company do into financial results? So any tech startup, any product startup, of course, most startups that I work with are SaaS models. This is just a very common model out of tech startups in terms of industries. Blockchain and NFTs is very popular, education tech, HR tech, uh, media tech. Uh, this is just the recent uh, startups that I worked with out of the product. Uh, I'm actually now involved with the fertility um, website that helps uh, women get pregnant, the ones that are having infertility problems. That's a very exciting um, company for me to help with because I feel like it can make a lot of people happy. So uh, it really doesn't matter. What I don't help with, I would say, is biotech, anything that involves natural resources, oil and gas, metals and mining, things like that, or a bank. So those are very specific industries that would go through a completely different uh, financing process than that typical tech or product startup. And how do you see the next couple of years rolling out? Do you see any major changes? For the startup station? Yes. Um, I would like to uh, really grow the education arm. I believe that education is the way to make the most impact for uh, the startup community and to uh, teach, you know, my mission really is to remove the fear of finance from entrepreneurial minds and to help explain how they can use it to drive their business forward, to grow, to accelerate the fundraising process and to ultimately, you know, achieve the change that they want to achieve. So I believe that the way to do it is through education. And so I am in the process of licensing my content and creating new content for a few platforms. I already teach at the Bank of America Institute of Women's Entrepreneurship. So I plan to do that more. Uh, and uh, going forward, I'm going to be writing a book to uh, put uh, the entire framework that I've created for uh, modeling and value in early stage startups into practice. And I hope that to be adopted among all of the accelerators in the world, if that's possible, or as many people so that, um, you know, there is a, there is a, uh, 
some uh, order to this chaos There's right now, I think when people think about startups and they think about startup financials, uh, very few understand how to do it. And most of them ignore it. Instead of thinking, and this is your plan, if you don't read through your plan, you increase the chances of your fate. Uh, Victoria, just sounds so dynamic and exciting. Uh, if someone's looking for you and Startup Station, how would they find you? Well, my web website is www.thestartupstation.com. Um, they can follow uh, me on LinkedIn, the Startup Station on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or follow us on Clubhouse, where we host regular live events. That's great. And we hope you come back to Radio Entrepreneurs again, because you clearly have a lot to contribute. Remind everybody, this is Radio Entrepreneurs, and we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more stories.